Here is the mode lock multi-mode laser. We're pumping here. There's one input to the fiber. Over here is the output. We have wave plates here, a PBS for the output, a biofringent filter, an isolator, and then a second quarter wave plate over here for doing the dominant polarization evolution. We're looking at the pulse strain on this oscilloscope here. The beam profile is being imaged over there. And then over here we can see the spectrum. So you, the laser starts when I block it. So I'm going to put my hand in the cavity, block it, you see there's nothing coming out. And when I unblock it, it starts mode locking again. It sometimes takes a little time, but that's the spatial temporal mode locking transition. So it's important to see that it's changing in space as well as time. So the beam profile changes as it locks into place. We see there are pulses form. So initially at the very beginning, you can see that there's Q switching. There's Q switching and then it goes to mode locking. Let's look at that one more time. You can see that the mode locking, it corresponds to pulses over a very long period of time. So as we increase the range, you can see that the average power is pretty constant. And if we then do the block the cavity thing again, you can see the same sort of thing. So this thing at the beginning here, that's Q switching. If we vary the light going into the spectrometer, so this is the spectrometer here, and we're going to play with this knob here, you can see that the spectrum changes. And this is because different modes existed in different places in space, and the modes have different spectrum inside the laser. I'm now adjusting the quarter wave plate and you can see that we're losing mode locking. So this is continuous wave operation right now is actually slightly Q switching. Narrow spectrum, no pulses, and then when I go into mode locking it looks like that. We can zoom in on the pulse train, do that again, playing with the quarter wave plate, not mode locked, mode locked. There you go.